Today is a great day because I'm going to discuss with you one of the most iconic poems in African literature. It is written by J.P. Clark, who sometimes called himself John Pepper Clark, and at other times called himself John Pepper Clark Becky Derimo. John Pepper Clark was born in 1935 and he breathed his last in 2020. He is one of the finest poets produced by Nigeria in the second half of the 20th century. He is also a playwright, a dramatist. He was a professor of English. What else? At the University of Lagos, poet, playwright, professor. What a marvelous combination. The poem I'm going to teach you is titled The Casualties. The Casualties. Through the poem you can touch the heart of Africa. If you want to know what Africa is like, what Africa was like in the second half of the 20th century, read The Casualties of John Pepper Clark Becky Derry Mao. Africa is sometimes called the dark continent. It is nothing but gross injustice. Africa is easily the most beautiful part of the globe. I once met an Englishman who spent some years in Africa and he said, if you live in Africa for some time, if you live in Africa for some time, Africa enters your soul and you cannot get rid of her. Somebody said, his name slips my mind, if Africa did not exist, I would dream of her. If there were no Africa, if there were no Africa, I would dream of her. And we are now going to read one of the most iconic poems in African literature, The Casualties of John Pepper Clark Becky Derry Mal. We shall begin with the title. What is the title of the poem? The Casualties. What is the meaning of the word casualty? The word casualty has a number of meanings. It can mean a person killed or injured in war. The army suffered heavy casualties in the first week of fighting. It can mean a person or a thing that suffers seriously due to some reason. My job became a casualty of the recession. It can mean accident or emergency. It can mean the department of an hospital. The department of an hospital which treats accidents and emergencies. It can mean property damaged or destroyed in an accident. That is the usual meaning in insurance, in actuarial science. Finally, it can mean fate, chance, misfortune. This is a rather archaic meaning and I'm reminded of a passage from Sir Walter Raleigh. Sir Walter Raleigh says, I quote, Men endure the losses that befall them by mere casualty with more patience than the damages they sustain by injustice." Unquote. Let me repeat the sentence. Men endure the losses that befall them by mere casualty with more patience than the damages they sustain by injustice. Here casualty means chance, misfortune, fate, the beauty of John Pepper Clark's poem is that practically every meaning of the word casualty is applicable to the poem. 
practically every meaning of the word castle type is appropriate to the word when it is used in the poem. I would like to go a step further and postulate that the poem works out an expansion, an expansion of the semantic matrix of the word casual time. After reading the poem, you feel that the meaning of the word casualty has been significantly enlarged. That is the greatness of this poem. Let us take one more look at the title of the poem. The title of the poem is not casualties, but the casualties. The determiner D, the specific article D, is very significant because the casualties in the poem are the casualties in a specific context. And what is that context? It is the context of the Nigerian Civil War, which is also known as the Biafran War. I would say that the seeds of the Nigerian Civil War were sown as early as 1914, when the British colonial administration decided to amalgamate what was then the Northern Protectorate and the Southern Protectorate. It was an amalgamation of the northern part of what is now Nigeria and the southern part of what is now Nigeria. It was an amalgamation but never an integration because the north or more exactly the northwest and the south or more exactly the southeast were very were very different from each other. The former was predominantly Muslim, more feudal, less educated, less economically advanced, while the latter was predominantly Christian, less feudal, better educated, and more economically advanced. When the formal decolonization of Nigeria took place in the early in the early 1960s. The two parts of Nigeria became prepared to fight each other. The South or uh, the East called itself Biafra or better still Biafra and declared independence. The Biafran War lasted from 1967 to 1970 and generated a humanitarian tragedy with very few parallels in world history. I would like to mention here Chinua Achebe's great book, There Was a Country, A Personal History of Biafra. There was a country, a personal history of Biafra, which is one of the defining works of modern African non-fiction. A work, a heart-rending work, which makes you weep at every other page. The Biafran War, as I said, generated a humanitarian tragedy in which 100,000 soldiers, military personnel, perished. Two million Biafrans died of starvation for Biafra had to endure a marathon naval blockade by the federal government. The war ended with the defeat of the Biafran forces and it is to the casualties in the Biafran war, in the Nigerian civil war, that this poem refers.